Hello my friends, David Kessler here and welcome back to the studio. Let's talk about acrylic brush care. And normally this is something that I wouldn't talk about uh, because I may not be the world's best at acrylic brush care. However, uh, I've had multiple requests for me to talk about it, so here we go. Uh, did you know that brush care actually begins before you start to paint? You know, typically we think about caring for our brushes you know, after we do the painting, when they're covered with paint and we're trying to figure out what do we do to get the paint off and keep them prepared and ready for the next paint session. Well, let's talk for a minute about water buckets and how much water you should have in your bucket before you start. Uh, it is a typical nylon bristle brush. Um, and, and here's a kind of a natural bristle brush. Now the anatomy of a brush, in case you don't know, is the handle, which is generally speaking made of wood, some are made of plastic, the ferrule, which is the metal piece that connects the bristles to the handle, and of course the bristles. Now what a lot of people do, and keep in mind that what I'm telling you, there's no real right or wrong, I'm just telling you from my point of view how I deal with brush care given that that's what people ask to hear. Um, when I use a water bucket, I only put a small amount of water in the bucket. And as you can see, the water level's there. So if I were to use this brush, right, the water covers, sort of covers the bristles, but it's not up to the handle. Now this bucket, I don't have any other transparent buckets, but this one is about two thirds full. So the water level is about here. So if I were to put the, the brush down in that water and let it sit for a while, it's gonna be up above the ferrule onto the handle. Now when we're doing acrylic paintings typically, or at least for me, I'll leave brushes standing in water for some amount of time. And what I see from most of my students, they do the same thing. So if you have your water bucket too full, and this sits in the water for an extended period of time, and the water's up to here, then you've got a couple of problems. One is that, you know, your handle, if it's painted wood, the paint is gonna to begin to crack and come off of the handle. You're also gonna get water all into the ferrule. So that when you pick it up out of the water and you begin to paint with it again, the water that's here and is into the ferrule now is going to come out all over the place when you're trying to paint. Right, so you're going to get excess water on your brush as you're trying to paint. Uh, and also, as we said, it's going to degrade your handle quicker than normal. So what I do, what I like to do, is put a smaller amount of water in there. And then when I'm finished, I'll bang it on the bottom to get the solids out as opposed to swishing it. And, and then I'll let it stand in the short, small amount of water as opposed to the taller amount of water, if this makes sense to you. So there's two issues here. One is cleaning the brush as you continue to paint, and the other is storing it in the water, right? So let's, let's think about cleaning first. Let's just open some paint, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little paint on this brush, right? And then we're gonna swish it in the water and see what it looks like when it's clean or if it's clean and then we're going to beat it on the bottom of this one to see which one cleans the best now a lot of people use this and so they'll have paint on their brush and they'll simply whoo, it's going everywhere simply and that's another reason i don't like this method so when it, when you pull it out it's got plenty of paint left on it but if we do the same thing with this one covered on both sides right and I take it in the smaller amount of water and I hit the brush on the bottom like that to clean it out, then the brush is clean. Look at the difference. Swishing in a lot of water, knocking it on the bottom of the water container with a small amount of water. So you can see the difference. Now that might not mean anything to you, but if you're doing paintings, and you're trying not to, to create mud in your paintings, and then you come back with this and you can't get the brush clean, 
then it's going to be a problem. You're going to make more mud than if you clean it properly and easily with this. So before you begin to paint, think about how much water you're going to put in your, in your container, particularly if your brushes are going to sit in there for a long period of time. And then also for being able to properly clean your brush, if you take that brush and hit it on the bottom, it's going to get most of those solids out. It's going to give you a pretty clean brush. Okay, So that's the beginning of brush care, is thinking about it before you begin to paint. All right, now there are plenty of brush cleaners out there on the market that you can use after you take care of properly cleaning your brushes while you paint. Then once you take them to a utility sink or however it, however it is that you clean your brushes, uh, there are plenty of products on the market that you can use. Uh, typically, I don't use any products. I use water only and a wire brush. So I'll take this, you know, I'll, I'll knock the solids out and usually it'll sit in the water, you know, while I'm finishing uh, cleaning up my palette and everything before I take it to the sink. And then I'll just simply take this, run it under warm water, and then use the wire brush to scrape the solids out. Just as if I were painting my house, I do the same thing with the, with the house painting brush. I would take the wire brush and just simply scrape it out the solids and then finish cleaning the brush. Uh, that's my method. The only time I ever use a brush cleaner is if, for instance, I don't clean this properly and it gets, you know, matted with dried paint. And if that's the case, then there's a couple of options. I'll use Murphy's Oil Soap straight into a small container and I'll let it, let it sit overnight. I'll come back the next day and it's clean and I'll just wash this out of the brush. And it softens the brush and conditions the bristles. Uh, I don't, however, use this for regular cleaning. It might be fine for that. My, my thinking is, and this may, may be flawed thinking, uh, because there's no research one way or another, but the feeling for me is if I clean this with any kind of soap every time after my painting session, that it leaves a film of some sort on the brush. And that film becomes, comes be, between the brush and the paint, which I don't like. Okay, so Murphy's Oil Soap. This is an acrylic brush cleaner, which is environmentally safe. It's called Easy Air Brush Cleaner. It works in a similar way, but you could use this every time you want to clean your brushes. You can mix this with water in a water bucket and uh, rinse your brushes out in that and then final wash of clean water. Um, this product is called Savvy Soap Hand and Brush Cleaner and it's earth and skin friendly. It's made from all natural ingredients. It's by Marvelous Mary Ann's Savvy Soap Hand and Brush Cleaner. I've not used this before. Uh, someone gave me uh, this to try and I have not yet tried that, uh, but I'm sure it's a wonderful cleaner for both your hands and your brushes. Right, and there's, there's multitudes of other products that are out there that you can use to clean your brushes. It's personal preference, whatever works for you. I've got brushes over here that I've had for, you know, 10 or 12 or 13 or 14 years, uh, and, I, and they've never had any kind of cleaner or soap on them at all. So up to you how you want to do it. I'm just trying to provide some alternates for you, some alternatives in how you clean your brushes. Okay, hope this was helpful for you. If you have suggestions for other things that you'd like for me to discuss in one of these weekly videos, please let me know. Uh, I'll put my email uh, down below so that you can reach me, uh, or you can go to my website, davidmkessler.com, and there's a contact form there that you can reach me. I would appreciate any suggestions you have, and I'll certainly put those on the list and get to them as soon as I can. If you like the video and you want to share it with your friends, please do that and hit the like button down there. Uh, if you want to subscribe, you can hit the red button for subscription. And, uh, you know, think about joining me for a workshop. We talk about all kinds of amazing things in abstract painting workshops. Uh, and I'm all over the country. There again, on the website, you can find a list of those workshops. And I think there's a link below for that. And I hope to see you at one of those. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.